right now at 7 o'clock or top of the hour, wherever you are, uh, we're gathered here for our weekly meeting of WorldWideWoodTurners.org. We have about 88 folks in the audience this morning, or the members, and they're out waiting for waiting for Matt Hubbard to do a demonstration on dot pain. And with that, um, we're going to get Matt to pop up. I can't see him, Dane. Can you see him? I'm here. I'm, I'm here. I got, there he I is. got you. Spotlight him. And all right, here's, here's the guidance or rules on this, folks. Uh, Dane's going to do a demonstration for us. Copy that. Dane is going to do a demonstration. Matt, pardon me. Matt's Matt going, going to do, do a demonstration. demonstration. You know, I don't know names. Matt's going to do a demonstration for us. That's Matt doing the demonstration. Um, Whatever his name is. Let's let's <laughs> let's let's Matt, let, take it away, buddy. Yeah, and I'll let I'll let I'll let you call me whatever you want, Eddie. Um, <laughs> and, and I, and I, because this is not because I'm not on the on the lathe tonight. Uh, I'm just painting. I, I welcome any kind of talk back or questions while I'm doing this. I'm not doing anything dangerous, and I'm not worried about screwing anything up. So uh, feel free to ask questions at any point. Okay. All right. Um, With that, we're going to mute everybody. Matt, you can back off and mute. And okay. I'm going to press this, and then you go, Matt. You go unmute. All right, I'm I'm back unmuted. Um, uh, those who've been in the meetings when I've showed some of this stuff know that my, this journey for me with the dot painting started about a month ago at Ron Campbell's hands-on retreat with a class that I took there. And uh, these three pieces here, this one, this one, and this one were all pieces that I did in that class. Um, and the first, th these are just in inexpensive wood medallions. Uh, and the first thing we did was paint them black. Now, traditionally, or I, I should say, I don't know about traditionally, but the most common way that people use this is they're painting on dark rocks, okay? And often they will take a, a rounded river rock that they find and paint the rock black and start there. And there are molds you can buy to make your own rocks, which people do. Um, so keep in mind that that's something that's out there. Um, so my next, the next piece that I did was, and you'll see this piece again and again, um, is I, I made this walnut box. And the reason why I chose walnut for this, and then I did dot painting on, on the top of it. And the reason why I chose walnut for this is because it was already fairly dark. Um, and the paints that I used on this were a pearlescent acrylic paint that required no thinning and a Delta Ceram coat kind of purple paint or whatever that says vintage wine. And uh, this did require a little bit of thinning. And for thinning on that, I used Floetrol. Um, all right, so let me get into the, that's that's my experience, most of my experience with it so far, but let me get into the, uh, uh, the document I have on it. So this is my, my little document on it. Um, and uh, I, I first wanted to touch on the tools, okay? Most of these things are things that you can find around the house, things like toothpicks and Q-tips and mixing sticks. Um, people traditionally use watercolor pencils uh, to sketch designs or draw, you know, use, or draw the marks with the stencils. Um, primarily you do that because they wipe up with, with a damp cloth or sponge. Uh, you can use like vegetable skewers as a stylus or for making large, you know, for making larger dots. Okay, the next item, ball, ball stylus dotting tools. I got these on Amazon and that's that set in the upper right corner pictured here. I will primarily be using the wood handle ones. Um, they, uh, uh, they all have little steel balls on the end or big steel balls as the case may be. And the reason why you use these is they're very consistent with the paint. And what you do is you dip the, the ball in the paint and then you put a dot on and then you put each successive dot you do, you get they get smaller because there's less paint coming off. Okay, the next item here is a larger dotting tool set, which is the one pictured to the right uh, with the multicolored handles. I, ha I have a set of these, I have not used them yet. Uh, I will show show them and show a little bit of, of what I got with them. Uh, the stencils, you can make your own. Uh, the ones on the lower right are the stencils I purchased. Uh, they're silicon. 
they 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 are very flexible, so they'll fold and fold around things like tops of boxes and stuff like that. Um, the the dotting people also use silicon rods for larger dots. Uh, I went and looked through my 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 craft. Let me switch back to this for a minute. I went and looked through my craft uh, my craft drawer <laughs> and discovered that I had some three eighths inch dowels in there. So what I did is I just put them on the lathe. I cut them in half. So I, I took four of them. I cut them in half, and I put them on the lathe and made little various sizes. And I use these instead of silicon rods that people use like, instead of buying something. And they work great. And I'll show that tonight too. Um, okay, back to here. Um, plastic pallet. That's that white thing. Uh, right next to the to it there this is just a, a simple plastic you can buy these very inexpensively at any hobby store or probably at walmart's uh, they clean up real easy um, paper towels water plastic cups uh, any questions so far please proceed sir okay um i'm using acrylic paints for all this this is what everybody's using um you can use craft paints stencil paints uh, artist tube paints, uh, acrylic paints all clean up with water. Um, the right consistency is important. You want the paint to form a smooth, consistent drop. You do not want it to leave a peak or a spike when you put your, pull your tool out of it. So the diagram here shows that. You don't want these little spikes or these little peaks when you pull the tool out of it because then it won't form a round dot correctly and it won't form a nice smooth surface correctly and it'll look weird. Um, Often you have to use a paint thinner. Uh, supposedly Liquitex pouring medium is supposed to work well. I bought something on accident called uh, acrylic medium, which actually makes the paint thicker. So the first time I did that, my stuff didn't come out well and I sand, had to sand it back off again because it was just, it looked cruddy. <laughs> uh, the thinner helps the paint last longer while you're, while you're working with it. It appears more glossy, which is prettier and forms better drops. So the, the 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 people who are doing this professionally, they're using acrylic paints that you know expensive, nice artist acrylic paints that come in tubes. It's usually pretty thick, and it requires a lot more thinning than normal craft store acrylics. Okay, um, so the paints that I showed earlier, this is something I bought. I don't know the the the, the pearlescent paint was something I bought on a whim. It was inexpensive, uh, and it's it's metallic and pearlescent, and it's really pretty. Um, and this stuff is basic. I've had this for years. This Delta Ceram coat is is basic craft stencil paint. I got it at uh, a Michael's years and years ago. This is what I, the paint that I used. It's still viable. Um, I painted a bunch of stencils on the walls of a, a house we built about 20 years ago with it. I still have the paints. They're still working just fine. This did require a little bit of flow troll for it. Um, also, I have uh, tonight. I'm going to use these uh, Walmart acrylic paints. Uh, the apple barrel ones, and they work just fine and they don't require any thinner, which is one of the reasons why I decided to use them. I don't have to mess with the thinner tonight. Uh, any questions on this, at, on the paints at all? No, good to know on that. Yeah, it's interesting. You you really want to, like, when you first put your paint in the little, in the little, uh, in the little, the little palette thing, and they make different sizes of these. This is a little big for what I'm doing. Um, but when you first put your paint in here, you want to test it to see what sort of consistency it has to see if you need to add thinner or, you, or if you need to make it thicker or whatever. So it's it's important to check that out because if you don't, I, somewhere I've got a picture, I don't want to show it, but it's a, a, of the first attempt at this box lid I did. And it was just, it was yucky. And I was like, oh man. And I took it in the shop, put it on the vacuum truck and sanded it all off. So. Understandable. Good info. Thanks. Yep. So that's important to know. Um, so basic steps is create your canvas. Now I've talked about this before when we've talked about decorating things. So um, the pieces I'm gonna show tonight, I'm probably not gonna get to the second one, but the, uh, the let me switch over to this. The pieces I'm gonna paint on tonight is is this piece here, which is a little maple test piece I did. It's all, that This is another funnel from a shop. Um, it's not very thick to begin with. I've been testing and showing things on this. But the important thing is, is I've got a center area that I can paint on and I've got a rim that I can paint on. And both they're clearly defined, 
there those will be my canvases and this piece i showed the other the i don't know last meeting this is also some bird's eye walnut turned out real pretty and i intend to paint the paint the rim on this at a, not but not the center so the real question about all this is how do you adapt this to wood turning because you know how do you take something that people are doing on stones and adapt it to wood turning so i hope to give you some ideas tonight that can help um so th this this uh back to the document here um you first create your canvas for painting I, I think of the wood turnings that i'm going to paint as a canvas rather than a wood turning i mean it's still a wood turning clearly but uh you know it could mean a box lid or a platter with a wide rim and so on so you know i'm doing a little a, a skull skull sweat ahead of time decide on a general layout maybe sketch it out or lay it out with stencils or even a compass if you need to um and use the watercolor pencils if you're drawing on your piece so that you can clean it up now i would like to say also that these pieces that i'm that i'm painting are sealed they've got sanding sealer on them um i don't want the paint to seep into the wood i don't want the paint to raise the grain get all that done get all your sanding your sealing and your sanding done ahead of time so that you've got a nice clean smooth sealed surface to work with uh any questions on that what kind of sanding sealer do you use? I, I'm using deaf lacquer based sanding sealer. Okay, got it. Yep, and you could use straight up lacquer if you wanted to. You know, it's not a heavy coat, it's a light coat. You want to raise the grain and sand it off so that you've got a sealed piece to work with. All right? Yep. Okay. Um, so decide on your paint colors and, and mix your paints. Now, I'm going to show uh, a, a sequence of mixing paints here. And I'm only going to use for for brevity. I'm going to use just like three different different colors. Okay, um, I'm going to mix two of them together. I'm going to use two colors and mix mix them together as for a third. Um, but you could do this. You know, if you had a, a, a you know you wanted to go from from dark blue to light purple or something, you could you know do it in in eight steps if you mixed them all. You know, I mean, I could uh, I could I could take this thing here and put purple here and blue here and then just mix them in varying degrees of white or blue or purple so that I got a gradiated uh, color scheme to use for my dots if that makes sense sure does okay um, good <laughs> yeah absolutely so and the, and the fourth one will be continued on the next slide which is begin dotting use a paint pen or a dotting tool to lay out lay out your design some people use paint pens uh and, and you'll, you might i guess the bottom picture here doesn't really show that um but they don't have to be ma mandala form they don't have to be they can be spirals they can be anything you want but this bottom picture here shows how you know the gradiated dots and how they work and this person is clearly laid out this is not what i did okay this is from the internet um uh but this person clearly is laid out several spirals and is painting and then dotted them with a single dot of gold all down the lines and is now laying out the dots between them and if you look closely you can see at the bottom of that lower picture you can see some of the watercolors layout lines that that person used there some people will lay out spirals uh with a gold pen a paint pen and then and then dot between them and or or lay out the mandala with with gold paint and i, I see people doing uh what they call flower of life which is a six-sided expanding design uh that and they lay out the you know the, the the whole design with a paint pen and then dot between the lines which is pretty interesting um but typically uh, on on the stones people will begin the pattern at the center and then expand outward now i would like to say one more thing i did sort of do that on this on this box top okay oops there um so i uh I, I started at the center and I did these, you know, that center, uh, that center dot. And then I did, uh, I did the dots around it. And then I, and then I began expanding outward. Okay. All right. Any questions so far? Carry on. Okay. Um, so these are the basic dotting techniques and I'm going to show them all here in a minute. Um, uh, dots, large and small. Dip the tool of choice into the paint, 
gently place the dot onto the canvas. Do not go all the way to the surface. If you go all the way to the surface, you get an uneven dot. Um, you can sometimes get away with it, but usually you wanna be careful about how you put the dots on the paint. Just do it very gently. The next technique is called walk the dots. This is usually done with the ball stylus tools. And what you do is you dip the paint into the paint once, then you uh, go, you know, move your move your tool, and at, at each at each place where you put the tool down, the dots get successively smaller. Now you can see this in these white dots here, and the green ones, and the red ones. This is done just dot 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 like that, and they get progressively smaller. It's a really cool effect. Uh, and then there's the swoosh. Uh, I've heard it called a bunch of different things, but this is what they called it in the class. So you basically just place a dot and then drag it to create a sort of a, a tail. And that's what the purple in the lower right corner of this of this picture is, is a swoosh. It's also a curved swoosh. Um, and then there is top dotting, which you wait till your paint dries, and then you paint another dot on the top of an already existing, already dry, dry, dry dot. And then, of course, you can combine these techniques and do all sorts of different things. Uh, okay, um, I'm going to show all these all these things here in a minute, but I would like to point out this little thing here is that several of these dots have been top dotted. Like the one in the middle has got a silver dot on top of the purple, and so do some of the other ones. You can see that, all right? So sometimes you can do it three or four times. Sometimes you do a, a, a sort of a swoosh and then and then top dot it, or, or you do a dot and then swoosh it, or, you know, it, there's a lot of different things you can do. All right, any questions so far? Sounds good, doing good. All right, so let's let, let's uh, let's demonstrate those really quickly here. Um, so I'm gonna use, the, like I said, this, this Apple Barrel uh, Walmart paint. This is a basic cobalt blue, um, and I'm just going to shake it up and, and Put a little paint here in my little palette thingy here. Um, now, give you an idea. Uh, let me take like this this one here. This is this is my own little dowel thing. Okay. If I dip this in here, and then I place the dot on like that, I get a dot. Okay. Clearly. <laughs> so. These are usually used, these tools are usually used just for creating same size dots. So you would dip into the paint and dot, dip into the paint and dot each time you did that, okay? Now, this is the biggest ball style, small ball stylus I have. So I'm gonna use and show you the difference in the dot. So there's, there's a ball stylus dot, all right? Now I can walk that dot and you can see how quickly I can do that and how the dots get progressively smaller. So then I can begin creating a design like that. Now, is that because the paint's um, diminishing with each dot? Yes, that's exactly why. Right on, okay. So let's say I wanted to, to have dots go both ways. Then I would take my tool and I would make a, just swirl a little bit to get a little bit bigger dot, okay? Starting dot. So if the next dots are all the same size, and then came back the other way, whoops, that's too much paint there. But anyway, that, that's that's just one set of techniques, okay? So then there's the swoosh, which is you you get some paint and you just drag it, okay? Or you drag it and curve it. And you can do any number of different designs by combining swooshes. Two. Or you can combine dots and swooshes. Like I can add a swoosh to this design here. And then maybe start dotting in the middle of this. Like that. So there's all sorts of things you can do with this. It's only limited by your own creativity. And there are a ton of videos online about how to do this and how to do that. And I strongly recommend that if you you see something you want to try, go hunt it up. Somebody's already done it. All right. Now I want to before I go into into the into the design here, let me switch a little bit. I, these tools here, 
that I bought. I have not yet used them. These are st stencil tools. They go from very big down here to very small up here. But this came with a whole with a whole ton of little little things, including this little thank you card, which I thought was a really cool design. <laughs> Yeah, right. And and links to their websites where they have a ton of tutorials and and so on. So there's there's a use of that one there is the use of a stencil. Uh, but there's you know how to let me see see if I can show this. This is some of the rocks that people have made, and some this is some of the mold the, the stuff in the middle is some of the molds that you can get and, and and so on. So there's a lot of options for this if you want to you know just do dotting. Um, but you know the question is how do we as wood turners you know make this stuff work for us well uh let's let me first go into let's see what else i want to do here all right we'll just go in and do something um questions i have one matt did is that did, did you add flow troll to that paint in the bottle no Okay, so that was just straight paint out of the box. This is yeah. This is this is this stuff is this is straight off of the wall shelf at Walmart, unedited. I actually um, I got this several years ago when I was doing uh, more um, paint pours, and and I definitely didn't want to taint the bottle at all. So I bought a whole bunch of extra mixing bottles, and and I've got bottles that all have Floetrol in them that I use for the paint pours, but these are untouched. So this, it, 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 what I would just showed you here on 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 this, the, this is all just straight out of the bottle. All right, just right, just like it came off of the shelf. Yeah, not all acrylic paints are created equal, by the way. Some yeah. some will work great like that, and I've got some that are a little too thick. That's yeah, well, I have, you have to test them out. Yeah, years ago, I took a, I took an, an art class to try and learn how to paint better, and uh one of the sets of supplies they had you buy was a set of these you know artist acrylic paints and they come in the tubes and they're really nice paints and they're amazing but they're you know thick as molasses so it's i can't imagine using that for this without thinning the heck out of it so it's you would strongly suggest press practicing on paper as you're showing there before you try any of this stuff on wood Absolutely. And, and if you if you've got something you really want to try, you know, uh, do it on paper, design, draw the design out on paper, uh, do the, you know, and do it on paper first. And because and because all that practice is all really helpful. Right. Matt, will you have a PDF uh, that we could download with your. And yeah, it is. The link to that is actually on the Worldwide Woodturners. Uh, Facebook page. I posted a couple days ago in case somebody wanted to join in and 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 play tonight also. So that the link to it is on the site already. So if anybody wants to download it, it's on our Facebook page, Worldwide Wood Turners. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, let me let me mix first. Okay. So I've got this other this other paint here that's that's. Uh, uh, well, more Walmart paint, and it's a much lighter blue. So I'm going to mix this paint. I'm going to use this. If you guys can see. Okay, so I'm going to one, two, three, four, like that. This is about the same amount of each in this center cup. And I'm going to take some, uh, take one of my mixing sticks on the list and I'm going to combine it and I actually want to make it lighter so I'll add some more of this so you know there's no reason why you instead of just doing having three sets of, of, of three stages of the paint here you could easily do you know six or eight stages or more so depending on how you wanted to gradiate it and so on. Now, one of the things that I that I you know I, I've sort of touched on it with the canvas discussion, um, but one of the things I want to make sure that you understand is that this is a light wood, okay? Uh, 
in, in contrast to the walnut, which is a much darker wood, I wanted to have colors that would be visible. So I chose the silver and the purple I chose started out fairly light, but I mixed it. I mixed the, the, the first part of that with the silver to lighten it further and to add pearlescence to it. So um, because my wood is dark, the colors I chose to use were all fairly bright, fairly light colors. And I gradiated between the silver and the purple for some of it. It's not really all that obvious here. But like each of these, there are subtle variations in the color. So there's like five steps in there. Uh, is that understood? Do you guys understand what I'm saying there? Yes. 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 Okay. okay. All right. So, all right. So I got my colors here. And I'm going to start with a big dot in the middle to cover up my funnel. <laughs> All right, and with any luck, it'll be dry by the time I get back to it, uh, so I can I can top dot it, um, but I wouldn't hold your breath. <laughs> Matt, right. a few moments ago, you mentioned about that uh, document being on our Facebook page. Uh, our master webmaster says tonight it will be on our website. Yay! Yeah, he can do that while he's watching. Okay, let's not put any pressure on him. He works for. <laughs> Okay, now one of the things I want to explain he here is he that, doesn't want to miss anything. That's fair. That's fair. Um, one of the things I want to make sure to emphasize is I have, a, I personally have a great deal of experience in laying things out. You guys have seen the Celtic knotwork I've done. You guys have seen some of the other decorations I've done. I have a lot of experience doing this. If you don't, if you're the least bit uncertain, use a stencil, use a compass, you know, I'm going to wing it tonight just for brevity, but lay stuff out. And you can see on, on this on this, on this this piece of wood here that I have laid out little stencil lines on the outside. So when we get to that, it's already laid out, okay? But I'm going to wing the inside stuff, all right? And I'm going to start by putting a dot there, and I'm going to dip the dot there. Now, the reason why I'm dipping every time is so that I get a consistent dot. Okay, that one's a little off. Because I want these all to be the same size. These are a little close and a little too big. Now I'm going to put another row of dots in between these other ones. Force myself to dip every time. I didn't do it on that one. Because <laughs> I'm hurrying. Because y'all are watching. Take your time. You're all good. And here's the beauty of it. You don't have a pattern. It's your eye that tells you if it's right or wrong. Yeah, well, like I say, I have experience winging this sort of thing. So, but you can get away with this. I mean, this seems pretty straightforward, right? This is a little sloppy, frankly, but you get the idea. So, okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same tool but I'm gonna change colors to the next one in line. So I was doing the light purple. Now I'm gonna do the middle purple. You guys can't really see that. All right, so I was doing the, the light blue and now I'm gonna, uh, there. I was doing this one. Now I'm gonna to shift to doing this one and then I'll put two more rows of there and then I'll put two rows of this, okay? Now, one of the things, and I learned this the hard way, one of the things that you have to be careful of is not to paint across your, your, your paint 
because you'll get it on your hands and you'll smear it and you'll have to clean it off. And that's no fun. One of the things that this pattern begins to create, if I do it right, is it begins to create a, the sort of thing that we see in nature a lot, like on the tops of acorns or the, or the tops of pine cones. It's a, it's a, it's a regular pattern. Now, are you basing where you're putting your dots on where the dots on the row before it are? Yes. Okay. I'm putting it right between the previous two. Okay. And I'm not reaching across my piece, if that makes sense. Yeah. This is where a little, sure. a little lazy Susan would be handy, huh? Yeah, which is why I made this. <laughs> ah! You see? He kept the secret from us, folks. <laughs> we knew we'd catch him. Full disclosure, man. <laughs> yeah. There's a lazy Susan I made on my lathe. It was either last week or the week before last. I don't remember. <laughs> I did show it on here. You guys did see it. <laughs> it's just a you know a little piece of shot plywood and a lazy Susan thingy, and it, it spins. Last week. Yep. Yep. Okay, I so I got two. It's got great points. <laughs> yeah, it does. It was a nice piece of wood. I actually, I'm not sure what kind of wood it is. It might even be, it's not camphor, but it might be, I don't know what it is. But it was something that is, is in the back of one of my shelves. I, I was doing some cleaning and it was in the back of one of my shelves and been in there for I don't know how long. All right, now I want to do, uh, I'm going to do larger dots. So I'm going to take one of my wood dowels and begin using this to do the dots with, with, with the darker blue. Whoa. Because I got a lot of space here to fill. This pattern gets big pretty quickly. And I know this is on tedious. Your, What's that? Matt, on your on your dowel dollars, and do you seal the ends to prevent the paint soaking into them? Or yeah, they're they're sealed with they're sealed with a sanding sealer. Okay. Ah. It's okay. Just tell Gary it was intended to be that way. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a little artistic expression here. And I'll do a second row of these. Now, the gaps between them are starting to get bigger. I want to dip again for that. They're starting to get bigger. So there's no reason why I couldn't come back with a toothpick and fill those gaps with really tiny little dots. Okay. You have to wait for this to set up to come back over the top of it to do those dots, or would it be? Yeah, wise? I'm hoping I can. I, I'm hoping I can do the uh, the center dot because I did that first before this is over, but it's probably won't be dry. It's when not like air. It's not like airbrushing where you're, you know, where you're, you're, you're painting a thin skin, skin, skin of stuff. And it, it it dries really quickly because there's not a lot of paint there. There's a fair amount of paint here. Uh, and they say to dry. Well, I mean it'll be dry tomorrow, you know what I mean? It'll probably be dry in five hours. And you say you're not touching the wood when you go down with your tool? I'm saying I'm trying not to touch the wood. No, I'm no, no I, I'm not being a wise guy. I just, I've never seen this technique before, but the, yeah. the goal is yeah. not to touch the wood. Right. Th that's exactly right. I, I'm not being entirely successful at that, but I, that's my goal. So I could come back here. Let me take a, 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 a smaller, this, this little one here and put little dots in between these. Mm 
Remember, members, this is by your choice, by your eye. And as always, it's your heart. See, Scott so Hampton. This, this is something you could do on a, you know, on the top of an urn or the top of a box, like I did with the with, with the walnut piece that I showed. Scott Hampton says he's going to do this year's Christmas ornaments with this technique. Cool. It's it's really it just takes a little practice. It's not that hard to do. And the design is all up to you. And I'm always trying to find something new to add to my Christmas ornaments. And I think this is going to be it for this year. This is great. Well, I want to see pictures, dude. No problem. It'll be a little later in the year, but you'll see them. Okay, so I don't know if y'all can see that, but you see those little blue dots I put in there? Yes. Yeah. All right. So that adds an awful lot. And there are other people online who do this a lot better than I do. Um, okay, so now uh, let's let's go to a... Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to use my, my big dowel here, the you know, 3 8 inch one, and I'm going to, let me start with, I'll start with a black, with the, with the darker blue one. I'm going to put a big dot out here, and I'm going to put it a ways away from these, because what I'm going to show is I'm going to show a walking the dots around these, okay? Now, this is a time when having laid out these lines with a stencil might be advantageous because they're probably not very consistent. How do you get the uh, layout line uh, erased, if you will, after it's dried, after your paint's dried? Well, after your paint's dried is the time to erase it um, because it, it a damp sponge, if you're using the watercolor pencils, a damp sponge will just erase it. Uh, too big and not too close. That's good. That's a problem there. That's going to look like not very good. <laughs> All right. Um, all right, now let me take uh, this one here and we'll walk some sets of dots around here. All right, so. So what, I what I've done here is I've started with, a, with, a, with, a, with one dot and I've swirled it a little to make it just slightly bigger than it would normally be. And the reason why I do that is so that I can go dot, 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 on both sides of this and have consistent dots like that. Okay. And this is clearly going ahead. to run into problems here because these are too close. For those wondering about how would this work on your piece? This pattern and all, it doesn't have to be this pattern. It's your pattern. Yeah. And, and you can do this in the middle of a bowl, on the edge of a bowl, uh, on the top of an urn. Anything. It, this will fit anything you turn. So, and then I can shift to the, to the next color and, and, do, and do another row of these. And they begin to look like this. Like that. Okay. Ooh. So there's a lot, a lot of things you can do. So let me before I, I don't want to get too far in the weeds, I'm finishing this because it's about to take a lot more time. Um, so let me go and, and begin working on the rim now. Okay. Uh, any questions so far on any of this so far? 
No, pretty so cool. Keep, keep showing this. Great job, Matt. Love what. Well, thank you. Um, chap that was asking earlier on, um, I'm confused about as well. If we if we draw it out with a pencil and we put the dots in place, once the paint's dry, will a rubber just rub out the pencil? Is them dots flat, completely flat? How would you erase this, the pencil mark? Th this is this is why I recommend using watercolor pencils. Okay? Right. Because watercolor color pencils will just wipe up with a damp cloth. Right. So after so your after your paint's all dry, then a, yeah, you gotta wait for your paint to dry and then you and then you like take you know take a paper towel and get it wet and just wipe it all up. Okay. Right. So in, in a, you know, and if you don't want to go over your paint, if you're worried, worried about your paint, you could do it with a Q-tip, a, a damp, you know, a wet Q-tip, okay? In a cotton swab, something like, you know, something like this. All right. So you just get one end, you just get one end wet and you just and you just wipe it up. Sounds so about watercolor. All right. So I've been thinking about how I wanted to do these designs here on the rim today. Hey, hey Matt, do you have to yes, get sir. the water pencil wet when you make the mark? No, no. It, I, I just I, I just put the stencil down and draw it. Oh, but, okay. Yeah, it just wipes up with with watercolor uh, with with water. So. Uh, and you don't have to put a lot of pressure on it so you don't damage the paint or anything. You know, a Q-tip, a wet Q-tip will do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, wow. gotcha. All right, so like I said, I was trying to figure out how I wanted to do the design on 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 these, on the rim here. And so I basically, with the stencil, before I got started, I basically laid out a, a, a series of, of of marks here regularly, not knowing what I'm going to do about this okay so what i want to do is i want to do some sorts of spirals here i really like spirals uh, if you can't tell from the ones i did in the class to begin with um so uh i wanted to do a sort of a spiral thing so what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to put a, a fairly decent sized dot here and then curl things around down to the bottom only on one side so i'm going to do that in all of these and we'll see how that goes you guys with me we got you. And right. This is why so, draw, drawing it out on a piece of paper will help because you can also do this on a piece of paper to test your 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 uh, technique. Right. So one of the other advantages of doing this the way I did this, Martin, is I'm actually covering up my marks with this dot. <laughs> So I don't have to clean anything up. <laughs> that works for me. Now you guys can see that this this paint has a little contour now. Mm -hmm. I, I actually I think it's starting to dry out a bit, but. Um, <laughs> It's still settling out into a dot fairly nicely, so I'm not too concerned about it. Would you have to put a little more um, blow troll or whatever on it if, you, if it's getting, it looks like it's peaking a little bit and not dry. Yeah, and I'm not sure that I would want to do that, Eddie. Maybe I would just add more paint because the flow troll will make it thinner and it won't, you know, it will change the consistency of it. You know what I mean? All right, now I do. Um, so I'm not sure. Yeah, that's an excellent question, and I don't know the answer to it. No. Uh, we always okay, look so, at our opinions. No, there's no rule on this. It's opinions. That's right. That's right. So oh, I know what I wanted to do. All right, I wanted to show this. What I wanted to do, let me. So what I've done here is I've taken a thin tool, very thin, and sort of extended it a little bit, made it into a sort of a swoosh, a very fat swoosh, okay? And you can add paint if you want to do that.
So the sort of the, swir the, the spiral pattern that I was starting out with, and, and you, can, you can clean this up. I need to do a little cleaning. And the, the, the beauty of, of using a thin tool is that you can really, you have fine detail, you know, control over the details that you're creating. He's doing this on a piece of light colored wood. Imagine if it's some proper stain of any color you wish, and then you'd put these accent colors on top of it. Go ahead and play with that in your mind, folks. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things you could do with this. So let me, let me now take a different tool and a different color and add a smaller swoosh in here. that uh oh did the wrong color <laughs> that's why the gods gave us gave us q-tips that's what those things are for <laughs> that, that's, that's neat right. to see that to be able to clean up a, an error like that it's neat to see that so you did it on purpose no i didn't do it on purpose <laughs> <laughs> Take care of the explanation and stick with it. Roll with it, it, was a, it was an excellent design and learning opportunity. Uh -huh. yes, not just for ears. <laughs> Another reason why you need to have the surface finish sealer. Yeah. Okay, now what I'm going to do in, for the next bit is I'm going to start walking dots. Okay. This one here looks like crap. So I'm going to start walking dots. I actually want to walk them further. Let's see if it'll let me. You can't pick up where you left off that because you'd have too much paint, correct? Yeah, so I go back. Well, I am sort of doing that. I'm sort of cheating here, Eddie. I'm going back in and getting a little bit more paint. But I mean, if you if you just if you dip your your tool and then went right to the end of the line you finished a second ago, it wouldn't look That's it right. Would it would be it would be too heavy. So what I do, okay, so Watch what I'm doing. I'm going in and dipping, okay, for the second batch. So I'm adding just a little bit of paint here, a little bit of paint here, a little bit of paint here. But now I can extend my line, okay? Maybe I got a little bit more here. Maybe I got a little bit more here. All right, so now I'm going to take a different color. So, but you got to experiment with this to figure out how this is all working and how to make it work for you and maybe do design changes in the middle of stuff. There's a question in chat, Matt, that could ask whether if uh, two dots meld together, they bleed together, what would you do to correct that? Well, um, the, smart, the, the right thing to do is probably just to, to, to get the Q-tip out and, and, and wipe it off. Like, like both of them away. Yeah, start start afresh. Yeah. So that's what I that's what I've been doing on the on on the rim there. And there's you know there's all it's not quite what I had envisioned, but there's all sorts of ways to do that. Um, uh, you could you know you could you could just do sort of a herringbone with uh, you know with swooshes if you wanted to, like I like I showed on the wherever that paper went to that I did earlier. Uh, you know, you could do, you could do something like this, where you just sort of walked it around the around the rim with just swooshes, and maybe filled in the little bits with dots or something. So there's there is, and this is just, you know, this is just basically two colors, 
and then a third one mixed together to get all of this variety, uh, you can see where this, this is offering all sorts of unlimited potential for doing all sorts of things. All right, so um, that's the dotting techniques. Let me go to here. Uh, I think I've got one more page. So in, in my demonstration, I plan to use the pa plastic palette, the small ball styluses, toothpicks. I haven't used toothpicks yet. And my larger lathe made dowels, I've been using those. I did use a stencil to lay out uh, the spot for the dots, but um, I, that's, you know, anybody who's ever used a stencil to lay stuff out, it's pretty simple stuff. Um, and this is where I, you know, my note that, that I have some experience so I can get away without using stencils a lot of the time. But by all means, use stencils, use a compass, lay out your lines. Uh, it would have made sense to, to, to lay out, for instance, on, on, uh, uh, on this, for, for this bigger line of dots here, it would have made sense to lay that out with a step, with a, with a compass so that they were all on the same, you know, the same distance from the center and so on. Um, uh, when, and, th and then this point here, this third point, when walking the dots, I will usually make a starter dot and then swirl the paint slightly to create a little bit larger starter dot. And then I can just cleanly and consistently walk the dots in either side a larger dot. And that's what I did um, here on these ones here. The first dot is a little bit larger and then I can walk the dots around and so on. And then the last point here is if you need to, you can paint or dye your canvas, your plate, your, your platter, your box top before painting, depending on what paint colors you wanna use. Like say you want something dark, there's no reason why you can't stain it, stain it with a dye or, or, or a stain to give you the base color you want. And people do this all the time. Uh, if, if you watch how people do this uh, online is people will sometimes create, uh, uh, you know, a, a starburst sort of effect behind it and then paint on top of it. So um, there's a lot of different ways you can do things with this. So. Any other questions that anybody has? I haven't been looking at chat. Hey, Matt, uh, did you use uh, the Sonia paint for doing this? So it would give that 3D effect later? If it's an acrylic paint, there's no reason why you can't. And I believe that the Joe Sonia, you're talking about the iridescence probably? Yes. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any reason why you can't use those. Uh, I, I, they're an acrylic paint, I believe. I've used them myself and they work pretty good for basic acrylic paint stuff. So there's no reason why you couldn't use it. I think it would so, look neat in the swooshes like you do with the string. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons like on this, uh, this piece here, you know, it's one of the reasons why I use, yeah, there you go. Why I use that pearlescent silver is it looks really cool. I mean, and this is a, you know, this, that's what this, the, the silver is on the outside for the swooshes is there, it's pearlescent. So it, it, it it's, you know, it's about halfway to being iridescent, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, how long did that top take you to do? Well, you guys saw how quickly I did this, I did this this piece here. Um, I, I will say that the top of this, like I said, I sanded. I, I, the first pass on this was really crappy, so I sanded it off and started again. I, you know, it didn't take me a half hour to do. Okay. Okay. So I mean it's 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 a pretty it's a pretty quick process and you can see how quickly, you know this is this 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 little plate here is like five inches across you know and I've almost filled this thing up with dots, so uh, you know another ten minutes or so and I was talking and explaining things the whole time I was doing it so. Hey, hey Matt. Yeah. What about uh, would you put anything on top of that now to seal it? Yeah, after it's dry, I, I will go through my process. I'll put at least at least three or four coats of, of, of lightly sprayed lacquer on it. Um, that's what's on top of the, of the box top here is it's got, uh, you know, four coats of, of lacquer, five coats of lacquer, something like that. I just kept spraying it till I was happy. So, um, and they're light coats. You know, you put a heavy coat on something, you might start dissolving the paint and things will run. You don't want, ever want to put heavy coats on something you've painted. Do you, re do you re recommend a gloss or satin or what kind of 
thin it, you know. Well, the, the goal of, I mean, you want your dots to be kind of shiny. You want them to stand out. So it would make sense that you would use a gloss lacquer on something or a gloss poly or whatever you're using. I have successfully used poly sprays on, on painted acrylic pieces also. So I know that works too. But the key is, is, is the light. And, and I, I like gloss because gloss sells. Yes, and, it does. <laughs> and, 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 you know, if, well, you're, if your goal is, your goal is to have your dots shiny too. I mean, you know, that's the whole point of adding, you know, of, of using, adding the flow troll or adding some other thinner is it really helps things get shiny and, and, and be, you know, a, a smooth globular, globular surface, um, if you will. And that's the goal. So it, it would make sense to spray gloss on top of it. So if you spray okay. sprat, if you spray satin on top of it, you would be defeating the purpose of, of doing that. So does that spray? Do you have to worry about a change in colors on your dots? No. No. Okay, it's your clear. Dots dude. <laughs> all, your dots are all dried, so you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, yeah, well, it's clear. It's yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I was just checking to see if that center dot was dry, so I could do something <laughs> on top of it. What about, but it's what, about not. The, what about the large dots on a curved surface? You've been doing everything pretty much on a flat surface or a dome. What about just a, a round uh, sphere? Because well, it would be elliptical when you put it on instead of round. If you put it on when it's flat, it, it's, it's going to be round, okay? But, I mean, I would worry about it running, you know, as you're rolling around, you know, like, like let's say you're doing it on a, on a vase or, or a bowl rim or something on the outside of a bowl rim. I have this thing here. Off the top of my head. No, I don't. Um, that's an excellent point. And it's something, a question that I would like to see answered also. Um, <coughs> sorry. Um, would it run, you know, before it dried? Uh, would you want to, you know, uh, you know, would you want to turn, let, let's say you were doing it on the outside of a vase, okay? I mean, you know, clearly as you're painting the dots, everything is still pretty liquid and it's not drying immediately. So there's a possibility it could run. I, I would want to know the answer to that, Trey. That's an excellent question. Well, that, wasn't, I, that actually wasn't the question. What I was talking about, if I have a, if I have a round dot that I'm trying to put on a surface, it's going to hit, look like an ellipse when I go on it because I'm only going to touch in the center part, not the two other two edges. Well, surface tension is going to give you um, it is going to give you the round dot. Okay, you know I'm coming at something like uh, I'm coming at something like this. Okay, so the drop of paint is going to be evenly spread out around that when I put it on. Okay, but put that put that on a round surface like a dowel. If you try to put a dot on the, on the side of a dowel, it's going to be elliptical and not round. I see what you're saying. Yes, the answer is it's elliptical. <laughs> so you'll have to incorporate that into your design. <laughs> Make sense? Yeah, but you're going to be to get them consistent. That's, that's an excellent point. Thank you for bringing that up. See, I've learned something too from this. This is great. Any other questions for him? Yeah, I think that would only work on a cylinder. If you put it on a sphere, it would be it would still be round. I think you're probably right about that. A sphere would be round, yes, but the but on a cylinder it would not. Or, or you just keep the size of your dot small enough that you won't see it. You could do it that way, but but a part of the game here, I think, is to is to get the, you know, you've got big dots and small dots. You know what I mean? So I'm not sure if that would if that would, you know, I, I guess you could still do designs if they were all small dots, right? Yeah, I'm I'm going to dive back in, Matt, because. Um... I learned a lot from that. Thank you very much for doing that demonstration. That was really interesting. I haven't actually seen that done before. Um, and I get the I get the illusion that what you're doing there is you are you're you're allowing the paint to create almost a droplet on the piece rather than stamping it onto the piece, which is why you're not actually touching it. 
Um, exactly, exactly right. Yeah. Going into the conversation that you just had there with um, with, with Trey and um, various other people that, that uh, were coming along, I have seen something very similar to this done. Um, and what the what what the gentleman was doing was almost stamping the paint on, so making contact. Um, and the tools that he was using, he had turned himself some dowels, and he had bought. Um, don't know what you guys call them over in the states, but um, snooker cues. Do you have snooker cues and pool cues? Yep, yep, we do. The snooker cue tip you can buy in different sizes: eight mil, nine mil. 12 mil, 14 mil. Um, and he bought himself a pack of Q tips and he glued them onto the dowels. And then he was using the paint as a stamping method. So the stamp would actually stamp on a curve rather than a droplet. So he was almost using it like an ink stamp because of the Q tip holding the paint. So it might be something else that would work on a on a on a curve. Cool, yeah, very cool. You know, uh, one of the yeah. things that the, the the lady who taught me also had one of those. You remember when we were young and they had pencil erasers that you stuck on the end of your pencils? Yeah, yeah. And they had a sort of an oval cross section at the very tip, if you if you remember correctly. She had one of those and she was leaving oval dots on flat surfaces. So um, I would, you know, using something like that, I know they sell these tools, which is what I'm typing up in chat right now, but um, uh, it would be curious to find out. I don't have any of those. At least I don't think I do, but um, it, it would be curious to me to find out if that oval stamped crosswise would leave an actual circular impression on a, on a, on a cylinder cylinder like we were talking about before yeah you know yeah, you well, compensate for hey. the for the ovalness by yes um i would like to ask you a question you you're talking about a, a cylindrical thing and make a circle now when you put the dot on you said not to touch the uh, side of the uh, part that you're working on could you not go with that rule? The thing is, is you touch touch the thing and rock your thing back and forth to get a perfectly circle. You, you've got to be perfect, though, Dave. That's the whole. Point. Yeah, but I mean, you, 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 you like everything else. You got to practice. Yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it, it, with this, uh, if you're going to do it on a cylindrical or brown or uh flat or whatever you still have to practice for what you do if you move that pin i mean that dowel that you're using just by twisting it back and forth but you have to touch the object well yeah to... i mean you could theoretically still have the thing hover over the top of the piece not touching it, it you know it's not a hard and fast rule um yeah. you know but what the, i'm trying the to goal say is to not touch it because yeah the thing the is, goal is, is when not you touch to touch it, it. But in that in that instance, you could touch it to make it round. Yep, you by could just, by just moving your pin back and forth or whatever it is. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. My uh, pleasure, Matt. Yes, sir. Do they have to be round? Could you use square tools to make square square patterns or diamond patterns or whatever? Um, you can make diamond. You can, you can make diamond patterns with a with a, a, a toothpick. Put a round dot in, and then extend the corners in in four directions. What about squares? Um, yeah, yeah, you could do that. I mean, I, you know, everybody's using dots, but there are if, if you if you go and search online for for dot painting patterns, you see people making squares and diamonds and stuff. So, uh, yeah, thanks, Dane. Yeah, I'm brand new at this, guys. I Welcome. learned this a month ago, so. <laughs> it's, <laughs> I think I think a, a simple answer to what all these questions that are coming to Matt is there are no solid rules yep. in this art, and it is art. So if you feel you can put one color on top of another cup of color with a toothpick and swirl it out, um, at some degree that'll work. But if you practice, and I tell you what, no one would turn this. 
you don't have the patience to practice and throw something away and sand it off. I, I, I admire Matt for actually saying he sanded something off and started because it looked like crap. We, we normal wood turners don't do that. Um, no, we don't. no. So, it, you know, here it is. I said lay it out on graph paper, um, get a pattern test on, on paper or something. Um, you can test what you want to do on a simple block of wood. So yep. this is my, this is one of my laser test blocks. And I will test what I want on this and then I'll sand it off. And you can do the same thing. You can block a one by six and you sit down, you do your swirls and your curves and you practice them out, see how your tools work, how your colors blend. Um, and whatever you do, do not ask your spouse about colors. That's, uh, <laughs> Hey, so, you know, one of the things I've learned is, is that some people see colors a lot better than other people. So it's, you know, if, if you know, if you think that, that some blues are actually purple and, you know, who am I to say no, you know, uh, right. do what works best. I mean, it's th this, I mean, this piece in general, this, this little piece of, you know, that I was doing here tonight as a demonstration, this turned out pretty good, you know, and, and it's, a, it's a junky piece of wood with a, with a hole in the middle of it and, you know, I've used this on four or five demonstrations and made it smaller and smaller every time. You know what I'm saying? So it's it turned out pretty decent. I don't want this to go away now. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, that looks good. Membership to consider it is your art and it's in your eye and your your eye and your heart. So thank you, Matt. Fantastic. You're welcome. Yeah. Once One again. of the things I would encourage people to do is keep thinking out of the box on the rims because a lot of our decorations are on rims on canvases of pieces. So I wanted to make sure that I showed some of what was possible, but there is a whole world of stuff out there that you can do on the rim of your piece. We almost never decorate in the middle, but we decorate on the rims. So, you know, there's no reason why you couldn't explore any of this. You know, there's a thousand ways you could do this and, and combine them. And I didn't do a very good job on the rim there, but uh, it's got potential, so. I think you did. It's a piece of art. Don't sell yourself short on that one, Matt. You did a good job. No, no, that yeah, was a real good. That was a good demonstration on technique, and that's that's what you can put out. People then take that technique and do whatever they want to do with it. That, that was good. Excellent. Yeah, that's yeah, why we yeah, talk yeah. technique, not art. Yeah, my I pleasure. I, and I, I, one of the things that I wanted to show is how easy and quick it was actually it was to do. So if you sit down and, and every night for a week, you take an hour and you paint dots on pieces of paper, you know, it, with, you know, design goals and so on, then, you know, who knows where it'll end up? You know, who knows where that'll take you? Um, you know, you'll explore your own techniques and that stuff and, and it'll all work. And, the, you know, part of my point here is that I wanted to show the techniques that we use in doing it and that it was possible to do it, you know, apply it to wood turning. How, how do you apply it to wood turning? So that's that that those were my goals for this demonstration. And I, I I'm happy to think that I did some of that. So uh yeah. thanks very much, guys. Good job. Well done, good Mom. job, Matt. Thank you. I think Thank I you, think Matt. uh we're gonna see a lot of dots in the future. <laughs> we're gonna be seeing dots for a while. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Matt. Great demo. Yeah, thank you. you have to consider very good demo. Oh, thank, you. thank you, Matt. That was a good demo. Looks like a good birdhouse cool. roof decoration. It does. Well, I thought about doing birdhouse roof, frankly, Bob. I, I, that was my initial thing. And, and, and uh, you know, I'll leave that to you, I think. <laughs> but uh, it, we talked about what you'll see in the future. Brenda did. Uh, see the bracelets? Brenda had. She's painted those bracelets. Um, you could have a lot of fun with this, especially on novelty pieces and Christmas ornaments and such. Um, Scott was right on the track. He's going to add that to his Christmas ornaments. Turn a simple ornament and then sit. And you don't have to do the whole thing in one night. Sit down and do a section of it and the next night do another section, et cetera, et cetera. What if they don't match? Where's the rule that says they have to? Uh, and the squirrels will cover or not cover con or conceal, but uh, take the accent off flat spots, et cetera. Because uh, you all know a flat spot on a bowl, it, it's a killer for light. Uh, you might be able to disguise it somewhat or work with it 
to uh, take the accent or make an accent. It's I love I like it. it. Matt, gave us, Matt gave us an idea of what we can all do, all of our work, and I really think that's great. Thanks again, Matt. Uh, uh, you're very welcome. I got I got one more point to add that I have added. forgotten. Um, there is a, a set of tools you can buy that have silicon tips that are designed to remove paint um, for cleaning up mistakes. This was just pointed out to me via text by one somebody watching. So it's, thank you, Michelle. Um, but it, it's there. There is a set of tools out there you can buy, or, or there are tools you can buy that have silicon tips that are used for for wiping up boo boos and cleaning up. Clean things up. 